What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna be doing a pretty fun video. We're gonna be talking about the five best guns of 2021. A lot of these guns you've seen the first shots of, some of them maybe you haven't yet. A lot of these have thousand round uh, reviews, complete but not edited yet, and some of them even have them out already. All of the guns are on this list, they're not theoretical, they're all guns that I have owned, or do own, and have them right now to show you and have tested them very thoroughly. Now before we get into the video, I want to mention my patient supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys that this video is possible. Most of these guns were either donated or purchased by uh, patron support, so thank you guys very much for that. Uh, because of that, we do some exclusive content over there, and we also try to answer all the questions that you guys have. If you want to sign up for the patron squad, all you got to do is go to the link in the description below. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. I would really appreciate if you supported those kids, so please get on there and click that link and donate a few bucks to those kids. They could really use your help. In in order to make this list, I want to specify a little bit further. Not only do the guns have to be made in 2021, or released in 2021 for that matter, but since there are so many good guns that have come out in 20, 2021, they actually have to be pretty good. I had about nine or ten hopefuls here to be on this list, and it actually took me quite a bit to uh, narrow it down to just five. So at the end of this video, there will definitely be some honorable mentions, and the ones that made it in the top five definitely deserved it. We'll start here with number five. Uh, this is the FN 509 LS Edge. It is the five inch version, uh, more of a competition, tactical, uh, styled version of the original 509. Now the 509 mid was one of my favorite guns of I think 2019 because it comes with a lot of features out of the box and it was really good for the money. And it comes from a company like FN that's well known for many, many years for making really bomb proof designs, really military grade firearms that work very reliably. I have a thousand rounds through the 509 now and I can tell you that there will be a review showing up. Uh, there's some things I don't like about it, but there's some real positives as well. Starting off with the fact it's extremely reliable. One of the ways they got that is even though it's a five inch gun, they didn't change the weight of the slide at all. It still has a similar weight to the four inch gun, so they didn't have to change a whole lot to make it a five inch gun. So you don't gain that kind of slow recoil impulse you would normally get out of a five inch uh, because they have these big lightning cuts here. Now, you gain a lot with a five inch. You gain a little bit of accuracy, but what you really gain is velocity. Uh, you get a lot of bullet expansion with a five inch, and you get a lot of recoil dampening with a five inch, plus you get an extra sight radius if you're running the uh, iron sights. However, I have a hollow sun on here. Uh, one of the nice things about the 509 is that it comes with probably one of the best optic systems on the market, one of the most bomb proof. You get something like the Glock MOS system, for example, these plates can bend, whereas the FN 509 has a really, really, really durable uh, optic system and an optic system I would absolutely trust, which is one of the reasons why we're running the optic. Out of the box, you also get plates for whatever optic you choose. I'm running the 507 on there right now. The 509 also comes with high def suppressor height sights, and it comes with this very cool two-tone look. It comes with a 90 degree break on a flat face trigger with a lot of really thought out uh, aggressive texture on the grip that allows you to get a hold of and control the gun. It has a scalloped magazine release that is extended very easy to use and it also has a uh, magazine well as well to make those reloads easier. It comes with three 17 round magazines. It is a striker fired polymer frame gun. I like the high power cuts and I like the look of the gun a lot and I like the extra velocity on the five inch and I like the way they did the slide. The thing I don't like necessarily about the 509 is that it does seem to have a little bit more recoil than it otherwise should. And on top of that, it also is a little bit heavier than it probably should as well if you compare it to something like the five inch VP9 or the PDP or the PPQ or even a Glock uh, 34. It's coming in at about 31 ounces, which is a couple ounces heavier than those guns are, and they have the same barrel length and they fire the same caliber. Another thing I don't love about the 509 is that it is a little bit more expensive, coming in around the $1,500 mark, where you get a Glock 34 Gen 5 or a PPQ uh, match or something like that between the six and $800 mark. So it's really up to you whether or not you wanna pay the extra amount. Uh, I would consider this gun worth the price, obviously, because it's on here. It is very accurate, it is very reliable, and it comes with some really cool features that I would consider usually aftermarket, like the flat face trigger and stuff like that is very nice to come on a striker fired gun. Some things you like about it, some things you don't. Some people love it, some people don't. But I certainly think being as reliable and accurate and as fast and as cool looking as it is, it is definitely worth a number five on this list. 
All right, in at number four here, we have some really, really cool stuff going on here. This is the Rome Ultralight. So this is a 308 762 by 51, not a 556. And I can't stress that enough because if you saw this in real life, I bet you would think it's a 556. Partly the reason behind that is because it's almost the exact same size as a 556, and this rifle naked only weighs 5.5 pounds. Say that again, five and a half pounds for a 762 by 51. That's right. Very, very lightweight and coincidentally also reliable and accurate. We were shooting about one MOA groups with this with the magnified optic during the first shots and the testing that went on after that. There will be a full review of this in the future, but there is a first shots video out right now if you want to go check that out. Uh, very accurate, very reliable, extremely lightweight. Now, one of the things about this rifle is it's designed with hunting in mind, sort of. So it's not going to be one of those guns you want to bring to Afghanistan or Iraq or something like that because I imagine durability is a bit of an issue on some of the parts on this gun. Not not like just for hunting, throw it down a hill or something like that, but long-term abuse, thousands and thousands of rounds. I don't think the gun was made for that, which is kind of why it's at number four. However, for a common use hunting rifle, this thing is the best I've ever seen. A 5.5308 that doesn't even have that much recoil is a really, really awesome tool for those fast follow-up shots, especially if you're hunting in like hills or something like that. On top of that, Rome is a high quality company that uses high quality parts. So not only do you get a magnesium um, M-lock rail here, you get a lightweight profile barrel with an adjustable gas block so you can adjust it and tune it to your particular ammo. Love that. Uh, they have a ma they have magnesium brakes available as well. However, I went with the standard Lantac. I love that. I'm rocking the Magpul bipod that didn't come with it. It also comes with an AR Gold trigger, and it comes with whatever furniture you want. I've got the Magpul Myad, and then it comes with a Magpul stock as well. And it also has an Ambi charging handle, which I like a lot. And all of the features on it are pretty amazing. As you can see here, it's also made out of one piece of billet as well. So not only does it look good, but it functions very well also. Really the only downside to this that I see is potentially theoretical long-term durability issues due to some of the use of magnesium. However, Rome assures me that that's not the case. And in all fairness, I have a lot of magnesium handguards and stuff like that and rifles that I've had for years that I've had no problems with. However, a 5.5 uh, semi-automatic 308 that's reliable and accurate, hard to beat that, which is why it's at number four. Now, because it uses such high quality parts and because it is sort of revolutionary, it has a price to match, sadly. So one of these things is certainly not free, coming at around the $2,500 mark. Now, if you know anything about 308 rifles, that's on the high end, yes, but it's certainly not like way up in the air. Uh, even low end 308 rifles come in well over $1,000. So uh, for what it is, it's not overly priced, but it is priced according to how amazing it is. Now, in at number three, we are gonna have one of my favorite guns of the year by far, and probably my favorite gun to shoot out of all of these on the list. This is the CZ Tactical Sport 2. Now, if you're not new to the channel, you know that I love CZs, and I love CZ 75 variants, and this one is the latest and greatest with all the whiz-bang new cool stuff that I really like, so of course I love this gun. Now, if you're familiar with the Tactical Sport, the original or the Tactical Sport Orange, they've had a lot of variations of this gun, but most of them, if not all of them, are single action, five and a half inch, nine millimeter or 40 caliber pistols. Uh, the interesting part about CZs is they come with internal slide rails. So you can see the slide is very small in this gun, allowing a very low reciprocating mass with very low recoil as well. Now, one of the things they improved on the Tactical Sport 2 is gonna be that trigger, which is unbelievable. I mean, it is certainly better than some of the 1911s I own. You're talking a sub two pound single action trigger, which allows you to just get the accuracy out of the gun. A lot of times you'll have a gun that has mechanical accuracy, but you won't be able to get it out of the gun because of a bad trigger or a bad set of sights or something like that. Most of accuracy in a gun is the interface with you with the trigger, and then a little bit of that is with sights. So they improve the sights, they improve the trigger, they improve the accuracy, and they've done both of those with the Tactical Sport. I had no problem hitting at 75 yards and beyond with this pistol. Uh, we got a couple hundred rounds through it now, I think about five, 600 rounds through it. We've had no reliability issues whatsoever. It's unbelievably fast and unbelievably accurate. I can't stress that enough. Extremely accurate. Maybe the most accurate iron sight gun I've ever fired. Now, another thing that they've done is they've increased the checkering a little bit as well. They've redone the mag well, and uh, it comes with three 20 round magazines right out of the box. That's pretty awesome. So you're ready to play already right out of the right out of the box. It also comes with an extended magazine, and the new ergonomics on the gun 
uh, are similar to the Shadow 2. If you're familiar with the CZ75 series, the Tactical Sport, the original one, kind of had a similar frame to the Checkmate, which was the old open gun, whereas this one, they've improved it to have the new ergonomics of the Shadow 2. They cut it up higher on the gun, allowing you to get even higher. You can see the beaver tail is cut up higher, and it's a little bit more of an increase. And then the trigger guard is cut up higher as well, which is probably the most important feature. Uh, CZs have a lot of great things going for them. One thing they didn't was the trigger guard would always kind of ride into my knuckle and some of the other people as well. And in this one, you're not going to have that happen. It's very comfortable. Now, some of the aftermarket stuff I got on here, I got some lock grips on here. Uh, you can't own a CZ without having lock grips. Amazing uh, texture on them, and they look pretty sweet as well. They made these for me and sent them over. I didn't buy these, but uh, I've definitely bought my fair share of them. I absolutely love these. Along with that, they have the new uh, sights on them, the fiber optic flint with the blacked out, with the blacked out rear, and they have the ears cut off, so when you rack the gun, you don't have to worry about them digging a nice little hole in your finger like the old ones used to. Uh, improve ergos on the safety as well. Basically what they've done is just improve the internals, uh, fix the trigger issues, fix the grip issues, and turned an already great gun into an amazing one. Now, the only downside I really see with this pistol is the fact that it doesn't have a light rail on it, and you're gonna have a harder time using that for home defense than you would something like a Shadow 2. Uh, the single action allows it to be in less uh, competitions than something like the Shadow 2, and the fact that it is about a 40 an ounce gun, so you're not probably gonna wanna carry that much. This is a specific range gun only, which kind of puts it in a specific niche, but that doesn't change the fact that it shoots like a dream. Price on these are around 1500 to 2000, depending on where you find them, but I promise you they're 100% worth it. And at number two was a gun that was so close to being number one. Oh man, it was a real close race. One of my favorite guns of the year by far, and one of the first new guns that I got to test out of the year, and that is gonna be the Walter PDP. Uh, for those who know me, I'm a big fan of the PPQ, very similar to that, but it has a couple of really key improvements that I think sends it way over the top. Now the Walter PDP is a striker fired uh, polymer frame pistol, but it's got a precock striker, which allows it to have the best trigger of any polymer frame pistol you will ever pull, and I will, I will take that to the bank for sure. When I ran this trigger, I was really surprised how good it was. I didn't think it was possible to have a polymer frame pistol that has that good a trigger on it. It's got a really short reset and it's got a really crisp break coming in around three and a half to four pounds and allows you to get the accuracy and speed out of this polymer frame pistol that you couldn't with a lot of other ones. Uh, it comes right out of the box with a few different magazines. I think this came with two 18 round magazines. That's pretty sweet. And on top of that, they have improved serrations on the slide so it's easier to grasp, which is really important when you're making an optics ready pistol. Comes with optics ready, however, initially when they first came out, they weren't, uh, the plates were not available. Uh, and that kind of sucked, but they are available now obviously, because I have one on it. Comes with a uh, accessory rail on the front there. It comes with a better undercut and a uh, better texture on the grip, which I think was the biggest improvement upon the PPQ. The PPQ was a really great gun, but it was kind of hard to hold on to, and it was a little snappy because it had some shitty texture on it, whereas this one has this sort of honeycomb style texture that not only looks really cool, but it's extremely functional as well. Comes with either a four, four and a half, or five inch barrel, and all the slides are interchangeable on the compact model as well. There's a full size, which this one is, and there's a compact, which I also have, although I don't like it as much because I got the big bear claws, so I've just been shooting this one. Uh, it has a little bit of a beveled magazine well on it, and the gun comes in at around 26, 27 ounces, making it extremely lightweight. Uh, for a full-size gun, which allows it to flex in so many different categories. You could run this as a home defense gun, you could run this as a competition gun, or you could run this as a concealed carry gun. You could even use the compact as a concealed carry gun, and then you could either throw a four or five inch slide on it and use it as a competition gun, or you could just buy the compact and the full size and use it for whatever you want. I'm trying to say it's very modular and there's a lot of different uh, uses you can have. I also hear that a lot of these parts are interchangeable with the PPQ as well, so if if you have a PPQ and you want to get it optics ready, I think you can actually buy this slide and put it on there, which is pretty sweet. Comes with some adjustable white uh, sights on it, and the uh, magazine release works very well, and all of the controls work extremely well. The one thing I don't like about the gun is that it has a very long, strong side slide release, and because of that, uh, I end up inadvertently uh, not locking the slide to the rear on the last shot fire. It doesn't cause any malfunctions, uh, but when I do run dry, about 50% of the time, I just end up racking the slide, no big deal. 
does have a little bit more recoil than maybe something like the Tactical Sport, but it's also because it's a lot lighter. Now, one of the things that I think is unbelievable about this gun is how well it shoots, how many accessories or how many features come on the gun for the price that it actually is. I mean, when these came out, they were $500. Some, right now, they're about $550 to $600, somewhere in there. Uh, you can find them occasionally more than that, but you can find them less than that as well. For the money, I would probably say that not only is this the best new uh, full-size polymer frame pistol of 2021 there'd be a good argument that it's the best polymer framed full-size gun on the market right now for the money I mean it's got a way better trigger than most of the other guns it's extremely reliable and it's extremely accurate as far as reliability goes we've we've done the thousand round review of this right now we don't have it filmed yet but we have done the testing and I can tell you for sure that it has ran all types of ammunition with no issues whatsoever in the Walt in the case of the Walter PDP I think they've done another excellent job before we get into number one we're gonna hit some honorable mentions here and we're gonna have quite a few because there was so many awesome guns so we'll just go through them really quick in no particular order except for one who almost made it in the top five this is the Arex Delta M I haven't had a chance to shoot this yet but a lot of people uh, have been telling me how amazing it is. We'll be doing the first shots of this here shortly. I just wanted to give you a quick look because it might have made it on this list if I just simply would have shot it with all these other guns, but sadly, I have not yet. Another gun is going to be the Taurus TX22 Competition. Absolutely love this gun. Uh, 22 uh, is more of just a plinking gun and doesn't really flex into a lot of categories, which is why I just don't think it's as useful as some of the other guns on this list. Although it's a lot of fun, comes with a, a ton of features, including an optics mount and a threaded barrel. And uh, it's got an amazing trigger for an amazing price of sub $400, which is pretty awesome for this little gun. Another gun we have here is gonna be the Atlas Nix V2. Uh, phenomenal gun, shoots better than any other gun on this table. However, it is a custom gun or semi-custom gun, and it is extremely expensive. Uh, so expensive, most people couldn't afford it, including me. I got this from Manning & Sons. He let me borrow this for the review. Uh, but these are coming in over $4,000. Definitely more of a Formula One car than a Honda Civic, if you get what I'm trying to say. However, I had to show it because out of all these guns on the table, it can definitely outshoot all of them, but the price is so high, it just makes it unachievable for most people. And final honorable mention is gonna be the Ruger Max 9. Amazing little gun, uh, a little three inch nine millimeter that is a long the lines of the p365 where it has the double stack magazine in a single stack size gun comes with some cool features including an optics mount fiber optic sights and it comes in at a pretty good price as well somewhere around five hundred dollars however it's a little difficult to shoot and i just didn't vibe with it personally so i'll put it at number six but it could have easily made it in the top ten and finally we get to our number one and it was so good, I just couldn't not put it at number one. Not only is it so good, but it flexes into so many categories and it would be such a good pistol for so many people. It had to be the new M&P 9 Shield Plus. Uh, for those who watch the channel again, know I'm a big M&P fan, I'm a big Smith & Wesson fan, and the Shield was the original striker-fired polymer frame single stack pistol that kind of took the world by storm. It was the gun that everybody bought for carry and kind of rejuvenated the concealed carry market. Well, I feel like they've done that again by adding some cool features to the new one and adding that double stack magazine in a single stack size pistol. So it's a three inch nine millimeter polymer frame striker-fired gun, and it does come with two magazines, one 10 round and one 13 round so you 13 plus one you get 14 in the gun uh, very diminutive size yet the difference between this and something like the 365 and the Ruger Max and guns of that nature is that this gun actually shoots really well and I can attest that I've had three people come down here now and shoot this gun besides myself and it just shoots better than all of those guns for everybody involved part of the reason for that is the ergonomics on the shield are great but a lot of it is the fact that it controls recoil so well for whatever reason for being such a small pistol now it's a three inch nine millimeter and it only weighs 20 ounces so you could carry it all day and you're never going to know it's there it's also a little under an inch thick making it very comfortable around the waistband which is a very important category when you're talking about a concealed carry gun it's got good texture overall m and p's have always had some awesome texture they they reduced it they reduced the aggressiveness a little bit on the shield plus because it is primarily a carry gun and people are going to carry it up against their skin so they have to compromise between how good it feels in your hand versus how bad it's going to feel on your stomach the biggest advantage to this besides the double stack magazine is going to be that trigger now forever the shields and the M&Ps had that hinge trigger on it because of you know the issues they had with companies like Glock and stuff like that but now they have their whole new trigger system which is very similar to the Glock trigger however it feels awesome very little creep in it and it's a very crisp break and it's a flat face design and it just allows you to get the accuracy out of the gun that you always wanted to 
On top of the accuracy, now you have the reliability and the track record of the M&P Shield, and you have the recoil impulse of the Shield, making this, in my personal opinion, the best gun in its category by a relatively wide margin. I mean, the only thing that shoots even remotely close to this is my custom Glock 43X, which is a bigger gun, and I also put a lot of money into it, where you can get one of these for around $500, out of the box, ready to carry, ready to go. Another nice thing about it is it does go in the shield holsters, of which every holster ever made is for the shield, right? So you can pick whatever holster you want. If you like Vetter holsters, if you like T-Rex Arms holsters, whatever you want, you can use the shield plus for. So you get the reliability, the durability, the track record, and you get the ergonomic shootability and accuracy all in a very small, easy to carry gun that has a relatively available cartridge in the nine millimeter and all those things put together, I couldn't not have it at number one. If you have a different list than mine, and you had different guns that you thought were better or worse than mine, feel free to put them in the comment section below. I always like to learn new stuff, and if you guys have some cool guns that I've never heard of, I'd love to see it in the comment section below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later allowing you to get higher up on the gun, so they have a higher cut on. What a dick. Right, fucking dickhead. <laughs>